This is day 32 of my six mark challenge for AQA GCSE Science. In the run up to the exams, every Monday to Saturday, I'm posting a video with a new six mark question for you to have a go at. You can find a link in the description below to all this week's questions and also access all of the videos via the playlist. A quick reminder before you get started, this isn't an essay question, so you don't get any credit for answering in full sentences. It's absolutely fine to lay your answer out as bullet points or a numbered list or using a table. It's also really important that you make sure that you have answered the full question. So in this instance, that means talking about group one as well as group seven, and also making sure that you actually explain the patterns in reactivity, not just state what they are. Unusually for the six mark challenge, this six mark question is not going to be level marked. So there aren't certain criteria that you're having to hit. Instead, there are six specific statements that you need to have included in your answer. Four of those statements relate to atomic structure and its impact on reactivity. And then there's one statement each for group one and for group seven. So the first thing that you should have included in your answer is that as you move down any group, the atoms get larger. Or you might have phrased that in terms of the atoms having more shells and those would be the same marking points so if you said both of them you still only get one mark now the reason that this is significant is that when atoms undergo chemical reactions or form bonds it's the outer shell electrons that may be exchanged or may be shared so because the atom is larger those outer shell electrons are further away from the nucleus and that's going to have an impact on reactivity in addition the larger the atom is, the more inner shells there are in between the outer shell electrons and the nucleus. And these are going to cause what we call shielding. Now, what that means is that those outer shell electrons are experiencing less of the strong electrostatic force from the nucleus. So the negative electrons are attracted to the positive nucleus, but those other electrons that are sort of in between them are kind of getting in the way and stopping them from experiencing this. Now, this is going to have a different impact when we look at group one and group seven, because group one are metals. And when their atoms have chemical reactions, they lose outer shell electrons. So as we go down group one, the elements become more reactive. And the reason for that is that they are losing an electron and it's easier to lose that electron when it's further away from the nucleus and it's experiencing more shielding and it's experiencing less of that electrostatic force. Now, in contrast to that, group seven get more reactive as you go up the group. Or well, here I've phrased it the other way around, so they get less reactive as you go down the group. And the reason for this is that when group seven react, they are gaining an electron. Here's a sneak preview of tomorrow's physics question. Remember, there's a link in the description below to all of this week's questions and also a playlist containing all of the previous videos. Thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you back tomorrow for day 33 of my six mark challenge. If you found this video helpful then don't forget to like and subscribe for more GCSE science revision resources coming soon.